In this lecture, we'll study about the timestamp based protocols. So, a method for determining the serializability order is to select an ordering among transactions in advance. So, here in timestamp based protocols, the order of the transactions uh, are selected in advance. So, it means which transactions will be executed first and which transaction will be executed later in a schedule that is uh, decided uh, in advance okay so the most common method for doing so is to use a timestamp ordering scheme so this is one scheme where this can be done so let us study so what is your first uh, what is timestamp with each transaction TI in the system, we associate a unique fixed timestamp denoted by TSTI. So the short form of uh, timestamp is TS. So each transaction is associated with a fixed timestamp uh, that is TSTI. So let's suppose in any schedule we have T1, T2. In this way, Tn number of uh, transactions then each transactions have a fixed timestamp such as TST1, TST2 and so on TSTN. Okay. So uh, this timestamp is assigned by the database system before the transaction TI starts execution. So this transaction TI, uh, sorry this timestamp is assigned by the database system before the transaction ta starts execute okay so this timestamp is assigned by the database system okay if a transaction ti has been assigned timestamp tsti and a new transaction tj enters the system then the timestamp of ti is less than the timestamp of tj okay so what do you mean by this let's suppose the timestamp of a transaction ti is this okay and a new transaction tj enters so t this transaction ti is already entered into the system so so let's suppose a new transaction tj enters and then the timestamp of ta will be less than uh, the timestamp of tj means this transaction ta first entered the system then the transaction tj later on that is in a second it enters the system so that is why the timestamp of ti is less than the timestamp of tj in simple word the transaction which entered the system first had the uh, lower timestamp than the system which entered the system later okay there are two simple methods for implementing this scheme so the first scheme is use the value of the system clock as the timestamp that is a transaction's timestamp is equal to the value of the clock when the transaction enters the system so the first in the first scheme we have we can use the system clock so you know that every computer have a system clock okay so whenever is whenever a uh, transaction enters into the system then the timestamp of that particular transaction is equal to the uh, the value of the system clock so let's suppose at any particular moment the value of the system clock is 4 hour 20 minutes so the timestamp of ti is equal to 4 hour 20 minutes let's suppose later on another transaction ta tj enter the system at the particular moment the value of the system clock is let's suppose 4 hour 40 minutes then the the timestamp of tj is equal to 4 hour 40 minutes so in this way the system clock can be used to assign the uh, timestamp value of any transaction so this is the first scheme okay in the second scheme in second scheme we have you can use a logical counter that is incremented after a new timestamp has been assigned that is a transactions timestamp is equal to the value of the counter when the transaction enters the system so for this we have a logical counter logical counter is nothing but a variable counter variable this is initially assigned to let's suppose zero whenever a transaction ta enter the system then the timestamp of ti is equal to the value of the counter 0 and it will be incremented by 1. Let's suppose later on another transaction tj enter the system. 
when the timestamp of tj is equal to the counter value that is 1 and it is incremented by 2. Let's suppose in, in, in this way, let's suppose another transition tn, another system later on, then the then the timestamp of tn is equal to the counter value 2 and it will be incremented by 3 and, and, and so on. So in this way, we can use either a logical counter or a system clock to assign the timestamp of any transaction. The timestamp of the transactions determine the serializability order. Thus, if the transaction of TI, sorry, if the timestamp of TI is less than the timestamp of TJ, then the system must ensure that the produced schedule is equivalent to a serial schedule in which transaction TI appears before the transaction TJ. So let's suppose the timestamp of TI is less than the timestamp of TJ. It means the transaction TI under the system first and the transaction TJ under the system later on. Okay, so in any schedule, okay, let's suppose there is schedule which consists of these two uh, transaction TI and TJ. Then we can have an equivalent serial schedule SDS. Okay, so we can have an equivalent uh, serial schedule SDS where uh, these two transactions are participating ti tj so if the timestamp of transaction ti is less than the timestamp of transaction tj then then in the then in any schedule s we have two transaction ti and tj then the equivalent serial schedule of schedule of this uh, this uh, uh, schedule s then the equivalent serial schedule of this schedule s that is sds where TI must appear TJ. It means all the operations of TI first execute, then the all the operation of TJ will be executed. So it means we have a serial schedule like TI first, then TJ. So in a simple word, if the timestamp of TI is less than the timestamp of TJ, then in this then then we have a schedule, and the equivalent in the equivalent serial schedule, TI appears first. Or you may say the TI appears before the transition TJ. Okay. Or we may say that whenever a transition first enters the system, that will be executed first in the serial schedule, then the other transitions which enter later that will be executed. To implement this scheme, we associate each data item Q to timestamp value. So we have two timestamp value for any data item Q. The first one is W timestamp or it is called as the write timestamp. So each data item is associated with two kind of times timestamp. One is called write timestamp, one is called the read timestamp. So what is a write timestamp? So it denotes the largest timestamp of any transaction that executed write queue successfully. Okay. So whenever it let's suppose a transaction TA which execute the write queue successfully. Okay then the write timestamp of q is equal to the timestamp of ta because this transaction ta has executed the write operation successfully okay similarly we can have the read timestamp that is called r timestamp it denotes the largest timestamp of any transaction that executed read queue successfully Let's suppose TJ, which execute the read queue uh, instruction successfully. Then the R timestamp, the read timestamp of Q is equal to the timestamp of TJ. So in a simple word, the write timestamp is equal to the uh, the timestamp of any transition which executed the write queue successfully. Similarly, the read timestamp is equal to the timestamp of the timestamp of those uh, the timestamp of that transaction which executed read queue successfully. Okay, so this much for today. Thank you.